Okay, so this is going to be my last update for a while. Um, the UK has made its decision and it looks like we are certainly leaving the European Union. Now, if you're a passionate Eurosceptic, um, this will obviously be great news. Um, if you're a passionate Europhile, this will be a very dark day. Um, I am someone who voted Remain. But I wouldn't describe myself as a Europhile of the organisation. So I'm not quite as gloomy today as I was in the wake of the refer uh, in the wake of the general election results last year. I was very gloomy at that time because the SNP done so well and um the Tories done very well. Um and I'm a critic of both parties. So I don't quite feel like that today, but nevertheless I can't deny I feel a great deal of uncertainty and a certain degree of unease and depression with this because a lot of the views from my friends online have been very pessimistic and um, I suppose it's just peer effect. It has, you know, has that sort of, what's the word, domino effect, I guess. Um, Virtually all of my mainland European friends have expressed disappointment. Um, I'm aware that's not the consensus. There are other Europeans who who are also Eurosceptic. I mean, um, Nigel Farage uh, spoke. Um, he called this Britain's Independence Day. Um, and he, he said next will be Brexit for Denmark. Exit for the Netherlands, as he predicted. My uncertainty lies in the financial situation. I know people are saying we'll bounce back, but to be honest, any financial uncertainty is uncertainty. Um, I am also concerned, very concerned about what the S and P are going to do. I don't think that they would necessarily have the power to hold a referendum but I wouldn't put it past them to try and push for another Scottish referendum or even do it unanimously just declare independence or something I really wouldn't put it past the SNP I think they'll be angry I think they'll um, the thing about the SNP is it's never been about the UK for them it's always 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 about Scotland and um, the majority of Scots have probably voted for Remain so Nicola Sturgeon will say, okay, we're going to go unanimously and just go. I mean, it's not as if they can reapply to the EU anyway. Of their own accord, it will take a long transition process, just like every new state that wants to enter the EU. So if Scotland declares itself an independent country, and it's a newly declared independent country, they're not going to just enter overnight. There's going to be a long, long process. Um. One thing I would say is, uh, if you voted Leave, please don't think that I'm your enemy and I've, uh, I'm not sympathetic to your views. There were several points I even contemplated voting Leave, because I have serious concerns about some of the issues um, in terms of how far we can determine our own destiny. Well, people have spoken, and I'm not entirely pessimistic. There may be some some good outcomes from this. As someone who's conservative on crime, I feel there may be some positive outcomes in that regard. But I have genuine concerns, and um, it's too early to say what will happen. On the political front, I think Mr Cameron's job is untenable. Call me a fool, but I feel somewhat sorry for him, simply because he's being vilified on all fronts. And this is the Prime Minister who called the EU referendum. Now, if you're a, you're a sceptic, why would you be bashing David Cameron? After all, he's the Prime Minister who has called this referendum. He's the antithesis of Edward Heath, if that's the right word. To be honest, I've been awake all night. Um, so surely your sceptic should be thanking Cameron for providing the platform for the situation to take place. Are we going to see a Prime Minister Johnson or a Prime Minister Gove? The Tories, of course, are presenting a united front, but that's party politics as usual. Um, I think the Tories are deeply divided, and I think 
it's very plausible that we will either see a new prime minister before the year is out or see a general election before the year is out. Jeremy Corbyn may also find his position untenable. I mean, I think it was Alistair uh, Campbell that made the point Jeremy Corbyn's actually been very clever in this because he has been pro-Remain but not enthusiastically pro-EU. In other words, he has tapped into a lot of public opinion. So maybe Jeremy Corbyn's relatively low key approach to this has actually been rather practical. I think time will tell. I, I really don't think that we're going to see the rest of 2016 without anything significant happening. We're either going to see a new prime minister or a general election. I mean, to be fair, David Cameron said he would step down before the end of his second term anyway. So he's done six years. That's a, that's a fair amount of time. Um, if you look at the tenure of British prime ministers, it's just above average. He's now between uh, Lord Russell and Clement Attlee in terms of longevity as a prime minister. Um, you know, most British prime ministers, I think the average time is about four or five years. So Cameron's just above that. He's a little bit shorter of John Major and Clement Attlee, but he's had a very, very turbulent time in office. That's for another video. The United Kingdom has chosen to leave. This has made world news. It has literally been in all the major news networks around the world. All of them. You know, we have access to satellite television. We have access to all the major networks. France 24, Russia Today, CCTV, Fox News, CNC, all of them. And they're all covering this. So the world clearly holds Britain in high regard in terms of they watch what we decide. I just hope to God we have made the right choice. The remaining months will determine that. I mean, the following months will determine that. I'm very tired, so excuse me if I haven't been very audible in this video. Um, but to my compatriots who voted leave, I respect you. I respect your choice. And to my compatriots who voted remain, I share your concerns.